Hello again and welcome. A couple of people commented on my videos about the spark gap transmitters. One of the comments is, could we do this with a car ignition coil? Another question was about showing a rotary spark gap. And what does that sound like? One example of a rotary spark gap can be seen in an old time car ignition system where you have a distributor cap. You have a common point that connects to the rotor. This goes off to your car ignition coil. And then each one of these outputs goes off to one of the spark plugs. This allows them to multiplex the ignition coil or cut cost. Of course, with a modern ignition system, you'll either use a wasted spark system, so maybe use one coil for two plugs, and that's how my motorcycle engines work. Or another more common one is to have a coil over plug, and that's the way my newest motorcycle engine works. And I believe that most new cars work that way as well. So for our spark gap transmitter, you could imagine this being driven off of an electric motor that's synchronized to the AC line frequency. And we have a large transformer again that's developing the high voltage. And of course that's synchronized to the line frequency as well. So then we can actually time the ignition relative to the phase of the AC. So what we're going to do today is we're going to simulate a system similar to this. So what we have is our signal generator. This is going to put out a square wave. This attaches to our telegraph key. The output of this is driving an IGBT slash FET driver. And then this drives the car ignition coil, which drives the same circuit that I've shown before with our spark gap directly across the coil. And then we have our two tank circuits. So that's what you're seeing here. This cable goes off to our signal generator. And you can see this is attached in series with our vibroplex keyer. Going back to the input of our driver. The output of the driver is attached to this car ignition coil and that goes straight up to the input coil of our tank circuit and the output coil again is in parallel with our tuning capacitor. So this is looking at the spark gap here. We go ahead and hit our keyer and you can see it arcing as I push the key down. So currently the signal generator is set for 10 Hertz. You can maybe see that with the camera, how it's flashing. So that's 10 hertz. What we can do now is go ahead and turn on the drake. Again, this thing is tube operated, so it takes a little bit to warm up. So as you can see, as I close the switch of the key, what will happen is we'll fire this car ignition coil 10 times a second. And we'll hear that spark coming across the radio. Let's go ahead and increase that frequency to 100 hertz. So that's 100. Let's try taking it up to about 200. So again, this is 200 hertz. This is at 1 kilohertz. Notice you can't really hear a difference. Again, if we consider what's going on with the fly swatter. So again, we start off charging up our capacitor and eventually our spark gap breaks down, shorting the capacitor to ground. And again, it resonates at whatever frequency we tune this tank circuit to. But this cycle repeats fairly quickly anyway. So that's why you're really not hearing a difference between running this thing at different frequencies compared to what we had with our fly swatter. With us running the oscillator at a kilohertz, if we switch this over to AM, let's see if we can actually hear a tone. So now we're actually decoding the AM modulation of the signal. And let's see what we hear. Let's just tune this off band a little bit. Let's just go ahead and we'll force our ignition coil on. And now let me change the frequency of our signal generator. Hopefully this gives you some idea what a modern receiver would sound like listening to a spark gap transmitter. Now, when I use the word modern, of course, this radio is quite old. 
but compared to a spark gap transmitter it's fairly new technology anyway that's going to be it for this video hopefully you enjoyed it until the next video we'll see you then later